do when I am hurt? What shall I do? So much heresy People twist your words The truth they do not see How can I make Them believe That you the same thing that we were a part of, mm -hmm. which is word of faith, the mm -hmm. word of faith, prosperity, gospel movement, which we didn't even know. We were just two singers who wanted to sing and we got caught up in something that we didn't even know we were a part of. Okay, let, let me disclaimer this. Their whole motto is you get rich and your health is better. Well, I'm older now than I was when we went to those places. We're richer, we're, we're healthier, we're freer, we're, 
yeah. do not listen to yeah. those lies yeah. of these guys that ha- have, you know, mansions and cars and thinking that's what it's that's right. all about. That's right. And it's not about that. Okay. So, so I, what I want to prove is that the Word of Faith Prosperity Gospel Movement is is in on this, okay? Absolutely. In on this Zionistic movement. So we were unknowingly a part of Zionism through the yeah. Word of Faith Prosperity Gospel Movement, again, which is a false doctrine, a false Jesus, okay? And it is a false gospel. It is a different gospel than the true gospel of Jesus Christ. So we've seen it with our own eyes, pastors bringing in rabbis to teach in their churches. And and even on religious programming, they're having rabbis on. T-B-N. Okay? Think about it. T-B-N. Three. 33. Okay? They're Freemasons. If you're a Freemason, you're not a Christian. They're not Christian. That's not a Christian television network. It is not Christian-based. It's foolishness. It's entertainment that we're seeking. We're not seeking God. We're seeking entertainment. Please entertain me. Okay? You're better off watching Prince. I mean, I, I don't get I just don't understand yeah, what people yeah, what yeah. this this Christian television nonsense is all yeah, about. Yeah. Seriously. Then I, shut it off. Then I have to say this. Then you have your messianic deceivers who are going to get your oh, yeah. eyes off of Christ and him crucified and get your eyes on Israel instead. There's a okay? lot of YouTube tubers and we know them yeah. that they, they're on there promoting their Israeli agenda yeah. through Christendom. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. What's, what's one got to do with the other? Okay. Well, but see it does. And that's the whole deception. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it does. So, but what? I, but I, here's what I have written down. You Perfect. do not have to do Jewish anything in order to be a Christian. Okay. Again, Apostle Paul spoke about this in length. It is not. Is it not enough for you to serve a Jewish Messiah, and then you're Ooh. studying the most accurate Jewish history book called? The Bible. All you need, guys, is your King James Bible. Okay? Throw away the Schofield Bible. See, there is nothing else required except to repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the evidence here is that Paul turned away from his culture. Right. And I don't care if you're black, white, it's time for us to turn away from our white culture, our black culture, our Asian culture, our whatever. Whatever culture is that you're glorifying and thinking that that your culture is going to save you, well, I have news for you. It's not. It's not. And Paul was the evidence of it. That's right. He was yes. the he was the poster child for culture busting. Okay. He did what Jesus said. He Bingo. forsook all. He for, to, he laid it down. To he laid it Christ. all down. Yeah. Yeah. So so again. In Galatians, it talks, I'm going to read it here. Galatians 4, 9. But now, after ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? He's saying, do not go back to the Jewish law. Do not go back to the law of Moses. It will not save you. Okay. So even Jews who follow Christ are not required to go back to Jewish law, okay? We are saved through faith, by grace, through faith alone in Christ Jesus. And if we do works to be saved, we are, we, it gives us a right to boast before God, and no one can boast before God. We have to humble ourselves before God. So this is what I believe. I believe now, and we've talked a a lot about Phariseeism, um, I believe that Zionism is the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees that Jesus spoke about, right? He was so against these religious rulers and leaders of Israel. 12 says, beware. He's speaking to his disciples. Be 
beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Now, I want to prove to you that Phariseeism still lives on. Here's a quote from a rabbi, Rabbi Dr. Finkelstein. Um, Phariseeism, he says, Phariseeism became Talmudism. Talmudism became medieval rabbinism, and medieval rabbinism became modern rabbinism. Okay? But throughout these changes of name, inevitable adaptation of custom and adjustment of law, the spirit of ancient Pharisees survives unaltered. And I 100% believe that. Okay? And it says and it says here adjustment of the law. They change the law as they go, just like the Catholics do. They change the law as they go. Yeah, it sounds and like you know my what? work. God's law. Every, every, every day is a different law. I'm like, right. well, are we going to stick to one? Or are we going to, you know? That's why it's, Jesus called it the doctrine of hypocrisy. Yeah, because you can't. Yeah. You, you, and what does the Church of America obey? One of the 613 Mosaic laws. Yeah. Tithe. Yes. They don't exactly. obey the 612 other ones. Because that, that doesn't yeah. affect their pocketbook, okay? But 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 one that affects them, they're going to obey and they're going to hold you under yeah. it. The very thing that they don't even do, but they're going to hold you under that command. That's right. not even a commandment. So we did a, a message. Um, this was uh, two years ago, called "Break Free from the Rule of the Pharisees." And I didn't even know that I was touching upon this whole thing that, that we're discussing today. And I didn't dare share some of my study, okay? But now I feel free to share this in light of sure. these Noahide laws, okay? So this is what I have here. The main agenda of the Pharisees, and this sounds like Noahide laws. Guys, this is all... In your scripture, this is all in your King James Bible, okay? Number one, the main agenda of the Pharisees to persecute the church of God and followers of Christ. Now, Apostle Paul, he revealed, he exposed everything. He exposed what he was a part of, okay? Galatians 1, 13, 14. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion or Judaism. How that beyond measure, I persecuted the church of God and wow. wasted it and profited in the Jews' religion above many of my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. So he tells us right here, what he repented of. Hallelujah. He's letting us know. Hallelujah. He's letting us know as our apostle of the Gentiles. He's the apostle of the Gentiles. Philippians, and every, and yeah. everybody hates Paul. Now, <laughs> this, is, this is not all because he says this again. Philippians 3, 5, and 6. Circumcised, this is talking about his upbringing. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. He admits to what he used to do. <laughs> wow. And to who he was. He came, now, he came clean. Yeah. So uh, verse 6, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Okay? He's... Goal, his aim, his, uh, their top agenda, his top agenda was to persecute the church. First Corinthians 5, 9, for I am the least of the apostles <laughs> and I am not meet, I'm not, you know, uh, fit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. He was so sorry for his sins and what he did. And I know that there are Jewish people who yeah. are going to come out oh, yeah. of Judaism just the same way Paul did. So number two, um, agenda of the Pharisees, okay? Imprison them. Acts 8.3, as for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house 
and hauling men and women and committing them to prison. He was pulling people out of their houses, putting them in jail. Yeah. Okay? Now, here we go. Number three, four, five, and six. Their agenda, and I'm going to prove this in scripture, okay? Their agenda was to put them to death, punish them, make them blaspheme God, and exile them. How do we know this? Through the book of Acts. Acts 26, 9 through 11. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my vote against them. And I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. So, Apostle Paul, the Bible shows us all of this, the agenda and their aim and their goal. Again, not of all Jews, but certain Jews who are the rulers of this movement, this, this Zionism hidden, mov movement. This, this hidden Zionism that's crept into the American church through these fake churches. Yeah. Guys, please stop going to these churches. Stop. Yeah. Take your membership. Tell me I don't want to be a member anymore. <laughs> okay? And become a disciple. Disciple, yes. Trade in your membership card for a discipleship card. How do you do that, Angelo? Well, if you're not willing to lay it all down for the sake of the gospel, you cannot be his disciple. And you know what? We need to be a disciple and a follower of Jesus Christ and the unadulterated word of God yes. completely bought, buy into what Paul was spoken through to through, and through him, the, 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 the New Testament Two-thirds of the Bible he wrote that, 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 that God gave him specifically. And you, you just read it, Veronica, yeah. what he was yeah. and what he became what he did. Yeah, what and he what did. he did. And so, so when you tell me about your cultures, stop it. Please stop. I don't want to hear about your, your white movement black movement. I don't want to hear it. Or your, right, or your Jewish or movement. Or whatever yeah, movement. Exactly. That's right. It, in the spirit, there is no, there is no Jew or Gentile. Correct. You no. Know? Follow spirit Jesus. Spirit has no color. Right. You know, but, well, I love the word of God. First John, I was just reading it, and that, you know, you say you love God, you've never seen him. He could be black, he could be white, he could be Jew, he could be Greek, he could be, he could be whatever, whatever he wants to be, right? Yet, you hate your brother. Oh, she's Puerto Rican. Eh, I don't care about One thing people. we do know is that Jesus is forever the lion of the tribe of Judah. That so we know. salvation does come from the Jews and their Absolutely. Uh, how do you say their uh, their lineage and their inheritance, okay? Of course. So I want to say this that I read a book called Judaism's Strange Gods by Michael A. Hoffman. And in Shabbat 111, it says Jews must destroy the books of the Christians. For example, the New Testament. The books of the Minim may not be saved from a fire, but they must be burnt. And I also want to say this, and this, I discovered it from this book, um, Judaism's Strange Gods, that Torah is not the first five books of the Bible. The Talmud is Torah in written form. This is very, very important. A lot of Christians don't know this. He says, according to Robert Goldenberg, professor of Judaic studies at the State University of New York, the Torah was Talmud. In a paradox that determined the history of Judaism, the Talmud was oral Torah in written form. Okay? So now this Talmud says the most hideous things about Jesus Christ and about Gentiles, okay? And other, other groups, okay? And I'm going to link this below. And I just find it very interesting that their Talmud is called Babylon, okay? 
So is there any coincidence that the Jews were exiled in Babylon in the days of Daniel and the Talmud is called the Babylonian Talmud? Why is the Jews' religion called Babylonian? Hmm. And why do leaders of the world follow the Talmud and many celebrities follow Kabbalah? So just some questions, okay? So I just want to want to close this and say... I'm so glad I did this study because this opened my eyes wide open and this kind of connected everything for me, okay? And I want to say this, that Zionism, Christian Zionism, is one of the greatest perversions of God's word. You know, wow. there is truth to it, yeah. but it's half-truths. And that's what exactly. Satan always does. There's half-truths. That's right. So yes, now look at this. The Jews are God's chosen people, but so are the Gentiles, okay? But hold on. If you're a pathetic sinner, you're not a chosen, you're not chosen of God. Mm -hmm. I don't care what culture you are. That's right. Because what and was the point of Jesus sinner, dying yeah. on the cross, okay? He died on the cross for your sin. So unless you ask God for, to, to repent of your sin, so God gave me this this Isn't morning when I when I woke up. He goes, "Here's here's the test. Here's a simple test. If someone is God's chosen people, they will come to Christ." Amen. That's good. <laughs> John 15:16. He says, "You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit." There's the test of being chosen. Okay, you will come to Christ. And that's what we believe Hallelujah. for. Just as right. uh, Paul's life was changed through the gospel and his encounter with Jesus Christ. And believe me, so, guys, we have, we have confronted some record executives with the gospel. These some yeah. Jewish, powerful, powerful Jewish men. Yeah. And they've rejected Jesus, completely rejected him because they believe in their culture. And yeah. We, we, we got to so, really, you know. So the Bible also says in Romans 3, 1, well, then what advantage hath the Jew? What advantage, right? Right. So In but, this world but you have here, advantage. It, it, but hold on. He answers this. Because unto the Jews were committed the oracles of God. Okay, that's in Romans 3, 1 and 2. Mm. And to bring the gospel to the world, which they did. This was accomplished not by the rulers of Israel, not by any of the Pharisees, but by the 12 apostles. Wow. This was accomplished. They wow. got the gospel to the world so that now we as Gentiles can believe on Jesus Christ. And just like you were saying, no one gets a free pass to heaven. No one. No one. But must also repent and believe the gospel. Acts 17, 13 says, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent no matter who you are okay acts 531 says him hath god exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior and for to give repentance to israel and forgiveness yeah. of sins jesus yeah. was sent to the lost house of israel for to give them repentance to give them an opportunity to repent. It's funny because during these debates and during this politic nonsense, none of these people have mentioned Jesus Christ mm. publicly. And I'm talking, how about repenting of their sin? Yeah. Nothing, of, nothing of that. They say, God this, God that. What God? It's What God are you talking about? Let's be specific here, okay? And, you know, because they're afraid of the name Jesus. Yeah, that's right. And, and, I, and I'm going to tell you, God ain't, he, Jesus Christ is not sharing his glory with no one. Amen. That's right. No one. I don't care who they are. I don't care what level you are. I don't care what how much money you have because your money is going to burn anyway. Yeah. Your billions of dollars are going to go away. Yeah. Okay. So you put your hopes and trust in money and man get that result. But if you put your hopes and trust in the in the Lord Almighty, yeah. <laughs> you're putting it in good hands, yeah. 
the good hands, it was a commercial, the good hands, this insurance company. Okay. So that's yeah. the bad hands. I'm talking about the good hands of yeah. Jesus Christ. Hands Give your life Lord. to him. Yes. So I want to say this to close. Zionists, okay, are taking advantage of the fact that the king of Israel is also king of the whole earth. It says in Psalm 32, which is about Solomon, who was the king of Israel, okay, at that time, it says, he shall have dominion from sea to sea and from the river unto the ends of the earth. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him, okay? But the ruling of the world is supposed to be for good, not for evil. Zionism is about Satan hijacking, okay? The world and using certain men who are willing to bow down to worship him to do it, okay? Certain Jews who are willing to do the, not all, because most Jews are really just victims just like us, okay? That's right. Certain Jews are willing to do this, um, and are Satan's, they are the, they are the greatest victims and they are also the victimizers of Zionism. Okay. And you know what I think that these are not the true Jews, but they disguise themselves as God's people. They say, oh, I'm God's chosen people in order to seek out our souls and take away our freedom in Christ. Right. I'm going to prove and that what, in the scripture. And when, see, my question to them is what God? What God? That's, That's the right. big question. Just because somebody says God. Just because they, yeah. they say doesn't God doesn't make them a Christian. Our God, yeah. Because there are many gods. Okay? Right. What God do you serve, sir? That's right. I want to hear his name. I know that you don't want to say it, but I'll tell you what, it's the only one that's going to save you. Amen. And he's the only one that's going to save this world. No man can save it. Yeah. It's already going to hell. Yeah. So Revelation 2.9 says, I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Mm. Okay, Jesus says this, okay? Romans 2.29, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, okay? And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is is, is not of men, but of God. So a true Jew is one who is circumcised. In the heart, okay? And not under the law, the law. but right. serves Christ in the spirit, okay? Hallelujah. So I also, I want to just share this last scripture, Acts 13, 46. Why are there so few Jewish believers? Well, you know what? Romans 9 through 11 will explain that, okay? We, have, we don't have time Read to get it. into that. So, but this is Acts 13, 4, 6. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. Okay, so he said this to the Pharisees. Guys, don't let God say this to you. Receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Repent of your sins. Repent of Zionism. Come out of her. Repent of making Israel an object of worship. And you know what the greatest cure for Zionism is? We say it all the time, is to read your read the Bible for yourself. Right. Get that understanding for yourself. Get it for you in your in your in your put it in your heart. Okay, because that's where it really counts. It starts with you. We are the church. The building is not the church. You are the church. Okay? We're two or more gathered in his name. There he is in the midst of us. He's here with us. So, you know, it's like if you're with your mom or your dad, he's with you. So be blessed. We love you. God bless you.